started looking at the book of John last week, uh, chapter 14, so I'm going to read from there once again. We're going to talk about why, just what, what is this about the Holy Spirit and, and why is it important? Why do we need to know about this? I would, I would like to ask this morning, is there anybody here today that has ever had or experienced a problem in life? Raise your hand. Yeah, we all have to raise our hands. Have you ever gone through a difficult situation and you did not know what to do? Have you ever faced a medical choice maybe that you had to make and you had to choose between A, B, or C and none of them sound fun? And you just need to know, Lord, which one do I choose? Have you thought about entering into a relationship and you thought, I, I, I don't know and you don't know which way to go? The one thing that can help you in each and every one of those scenarios is the Holy Spirit. So it's important that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. John chapter 14 <clears throat> talks to us about how the disciples were hanging out with Jesus, and Jesus is getting ready. Uh, he's going to be crucified, and he was going to be taken away, so he's trying to break the news to his disciples. And he tells them, he says, hey, in a little while I'm going to be going, but don't worry, because I'm going to send somebody else. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 14, uh, verse 15, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. That's important to know. He says, I must go, but I must, when I go, I will leave with you a helper, right? Uh, some translations say comforter, don't they? And what we talked about was <clears throat> the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. What does that mean? If you're here today, and I'm just going to kind of hit all the categories. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, um, you're not asked Jesus into your heart, um, First of all, I hope you do, uh, but here's one of the reasons, well, there's many reasons, but to focus for this morning, without Jesus, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't get the benefit of the Holy Spirit. He said, I send, I send the Holy Spirit to help you out, you that are my sons and my daughters. Well, I'm a son and daughter of God, aren't I? I don't know. Have you asked Jesus into your heart? We're all children of God, but are you his son and his daughter? When you are, then you have the benefit of the Holy Spirit, but if you've been walking with the Lord and uh, for, let's say, five years, ten years, fifty years, do you now not need the Holy Spirit? Uh, we always need the Holy Spirit, don't we? You know, we can get into this mindset of the way the world teaches is that once you get going and you have experience, well, you don't need to learn anymore. You don't need to learn because you know it all, right? And, uh, but the Holy Spirit, you see, we're always learning. We always need to hear from the Lord. The moment that we stop hearing from the Holy Spirit is the moment that we will stop growing in our walk with Christ. Things may look good on the surface, but deep down, not so good. And if you've ever felt like things are looking good on the surface, but deep down you know things aren't looking so good, you might say, well, I'm sunk, I'm done for. No, you're not. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. It's important that we hear Him and that we listen to Him. Now, <clears throat> let me do a little review from last week. Last week, we talked about the fact that it's important uh, to recognize that we're in a spiritual battle, each and every one of us. We go through battles. Uh, there's spiritual battles. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right, but against principalities and powers in higher places. And I equated it to Star Wars. I said, you've got your own real-life Star Wars going on here. You are the star. The war is for your soul. Darth Vader wants to steal, kill, and destroy, but be of good cheer because you've got an Obi-Wan Kenobi, Right? And he's given you the force, the Holy Spirit. He's given you something that you can rely on, something you can lean into. And he said, there must be a balance between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. You've you got to have both. They go together. They handshake together, kind of like chocolate and peanut butter, I said last week. Who doesn't like chocolate and peanut butter, by the way? Do we got anybody? We got one. See, it's so good. Everybody likes chocolate and peanut butter. Almost everybody likes chocolate and peanut butter. And it was a beautiful relationship. He says, when you have the Word and the Spirit, there's something that happens that brings such a strength. And it's important that we catch this. 
Don't think for one moment that because you've walked with the Lord for a number of years, I don't need to hear the Holy Spirit. We need to hear Him each and every day. He said, I will bring, a, if I leave, when I leave, I will give you a, the comforter. Um, I will give you a, a helper. The word that's used there in the Greek is parakletos. Para is a word that means to come alongside. And then they use the word there, kleto, which means literally to, come, uh, to, to throw along. So Jesus says, when I leave, I'm going to send a helper. I'm literally going to throw someone alongside of you for whatever it is that you go through in your life. So if you're here today and you're a believer and you're struggling, the Holy Spirit's with you. He's with you. And he will speak to you the things that you need to hear from God himself. But we've got to remember and we've got to develop an ear to hear that voice. I'll, I'll say a little more about that in a little while. The comforter, though, <clears throat> is there to help us. Uh, I think I equated it last week to having a, you ever have a comforter in your house that's there for looks but not for use? Remember that? You know, we got the comforter, it looks pretty, but don't you dare touch it. Uh, in my house, <clears throat> it's not comforters, it's pillows. How many of you have pillows in your house? Now, not p- pillows on your bed, pillows all over your couch or your chairs or, they're, they're decorative pillows, right? And, uh, in our house, I, I give my wife a hard time. <clears throat> we, got a, we, bought, we bought a new couch last year, and it's kind of an L shape, you know. And in the corner of this uh, couch is 15 pillows. F- 15. There's not even 15 people in our house, you know. So obviously, we think differently, and, and that's probably a blessing. But I, I give her a hard time. I'm like, you know, why do we need so many pillows? Not only do we have pillows there, but we have three on each end. And then you go in, anywhere you can sit, there's a pillow there. <clears throat> and I said, we don't need all these pillows, you know. And if, if I were to grab one of those pillows to lay my head on it, oh, God help me. Those are not there for your use, Jim Machen. Those are there for decor, right? Now, I give her a hard time, and I, and I, and I pick on her, and she knows that. But I said last week, how sad would it be to know that we could be a church or that there may be churches who have a comforter that's there to help us, but we don't use him. We don't, we don't listen to him. Um, we may hear him, but do you listen? It's kind of like your children. They can hear you say, go do something, but that doesn't impress you until they do it, until they do it. He says, I've given you the helper. Now, the disciples, they were kind of, I, I, think, I think maybe I would have been the same because they're like, hey. Jesus says, I've got to go, but I'm going to send you the helper. And they said, Jesus, we don't want you to go. I think I would have said the same thing. If I were hanging with somebody that could raise the dead, heal the sick, you know, he can, the blind, he, he can make them see, the deaf, he can open their ear, he can take a whopper and turn it into like a mega meal, he can do all these amazing things, I don't think you would want Jesus to leave you either. But he says, no, in his word he said, I must go. I must go. It's actually to your benefit that I go because if I go, then you will all have this helper that I will send you. And they said, we we don't want a helper. We want you. But he knew something we didn't know. Jesus could have remained, but because he went and sent the helper, he was able to send his Holy Spirit to come alongside of us so that no matter what we're going through, we can be right in the middle of the presence of God. Ooh, here's another five minutes. <clears throat> in the presence of God is the place to be. You know, I, I shared with you last week that we took my kids, in case you weren't here last week, I, I kind of set it up, but uh, we liked to mess with our kids. I think it's a spiritual gift that I have, you know, uh, to mess with my kids. And we took them on a trail hiking at night, and I would tell them these stories that would get them kind of spooked out. And, and I said, here's the deal. Whenever, whenever we go down the path, if you want to go home, just say the word, we go home. And the first night, we walked down the path. I was telling the story. And uh, uh, if you want to hear the story, you can YouTube it and listen to it from last week, okay? And uh, the first night, <clears throat> Seth said, I'm going back. And we went back to the house. But the next night, we get in there. We had a group of people, like eight of us. And I said, well, let's go. And Seth jumped in the middle of the group. And he said, I'm walking in the middle. He goes, I watch Scooby-Doo. I know how this works. The people on the ends, they get picked off. But the ones in the middle, they're safe. And it got me thinking, isn't that where we should be? is in the middle of the presence of God. That's where you're the safest. That's where you and I will be able to hear the Lord. So 
what are the three basics that we need to hear? Now, I started to uh, go through point number one with you, and I think we made it halfway through, but if you weren't here last week, what are three things we need to know about the Holy Spirit and why it's important? Number one, write down that He's my helper. He's my helper. He says it is better that I go. Uh, have you ever needed a helper? Have you ever needed somebody to help you maybe find something you couldn't find? Uh, you can't locate your keys, let's say, and you walk to the front room and the other room and downstairs and upstairs, the garage, the car. I can't find my keys. And you walk in with frustration and disgust and you tell your wife, where are my keys at? And she goes, right here. Boom. And she picks them up without any hesitation. How is it she can spot some of those things that I couldn't spot? But she helped me out by seeing what I couldn't see. It's exactly what the Holy Spirit does. He's our helper. He comes along and makes that which is there in front of us, gives us eyes to see maybe what we could not see before. Don't get me wrong, he's not a genie in a bottle, but he wants to help us in life. For example, when you've got a couple jobs to choose from, and you're saying, Lord, which one do I go with? And you start listening and hearing the Holy Spirit. He'll develop that in your heart and your life. Listen for Him. He'll speak to you to help you know. Sometimes He doesn't say, choose A or choose B. Sometimes He says, you choose. He wants there to just be a blessing. Sometimes you'll get a check in your heart. You ever get that check in your heart? You know what I'm talking about? When, Kind of like when you're in a town you don't know and you end up in a neighborhood that maybe you wouldn't frequent. You're like, this doesn't look too good around. What's happening? You're kind of getting a check in your heart. You know what I'm talking about? Let's roll the windows up and lock the doors until we get out of this neighborhood. Sometimes in life, when you end up in places that maybe you, you shouldn't be, maybe there's danger around the corner and you don't know it, the Holy Spirit, He'll help you. He'll warn you. He'll protect you. He's our helper. And He will help us through life. We've got to know when to turn to the left, when to turn to the right. We've got to know when to go forward, when to back up and slow down. How are we going to know how to hold on to the things that God has us hold on to if we don't have the Holy Spirit to lead us? <clears throat> We've got to hear Him. We've got to have His Holy Spirit. The world is going to tell you this. The world is going to tell you, this is how I think you should do it. Walk into a relationship. You don't need to be married. You don't have to get married. Try it out. If they don't get, get along with you, they frustrate you, if they're jerks, then just dump them and go to the next one and try another one. Just keep doing what it takes to make you happy. That's what the world will tell you. But the Holy Spirit, He'll come and He'll speak to you and He'll show you things that you maybe didn't see once before. <clears throat> he'll speak things to you and ask you to fix those in your heart and in your life. And when you do, you become healthier. You become healed. You become whole. We doing good? Okay, you're awful quiet. So that means either I've, re I've said this already, you're bored, or you're convicted. <laughs> <coughs> or learning. Yeah, I, I can think of many times when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he's told me not to do something. Let, let's just get this out in the open. Have you ever found it to be true that the things in this world that you, that the Holy Spirit sometimes says, don't do that, those are the things that are, are the most tempting, <clears throat> the most attractive, the most desirable. And you're like, I want to do that. But he says no. Now, you've got a choice that you can make. You can either listen to him or you can listen to yourself. But there's always consequences that come that will be attached to it. He says, will you develop an ear that hears me? Because the Holy Spirit's job is to convict, not condemn, Condemn means it's going to he's going to tell you what a loser you are, how you failed, and how miserable you are. Listen, that's the enemy's job. He does that. But the Holy Spirit convicts. Conviction can look like this. You're going to take something that you shouldn't take. It's kind of like, let's say you're at a store, and uh, it doesn't belong to you. You haven't paid for it, but you want it, so you take it. <clears throat> and inside, you've got that, ah. Oh. First, you've got the whole, I hope I don't get caught thing. But then you got that thing inside that just goes, I know it's not right, but I want it. And so if I can't pay for it, nobody's going to get it for me, I'll make it happen. But you got that feeling inside, you know, that just bugs at you. It just kind of gnaws at you. And that's the Holy Spirit. It's convicting you. And the, and the sad thing is, is that people, whether it's stealing or it's, or it's an addiction to something or other, 
When they hear the Holy Spirit, they work hard at trying to ignore that voice. And the sad thing is, is eventually, when you ignore that voice long enough, you become dull to hearing that voice. That's why people can be in places and make wrong choices, and they feel like they're, what? You know, I've just learned how to tune that voice out. The Holy Spirit says, I want to be your helper. So you and I must develop an ear to hear the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, he will speak to us. Number two, write this down. Number one, he's your helper. Number two, he's my friend and he's not weird. (laughs) Now there's a reason I put the whole he's not weird at the end of it. The reason is this. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, many people make it something it's not. They make it weird. They associate the Holy Spirit with this religious kind of a thing, and they, they, they think it's a weird thing. Now, let me tell you something that I'm sure you've discovered already. You, you may know this, but here we go. There's a lot of weird people in this world. Have you noticed that, or is it just me? Okay. Um, can, can, I go, can I go a little bit further? Here we go. Sometimes there's a lot of weird people in church. Don't look at your neighbor. <laughs> Eyes straight forward. There's weird people in this world. And let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit, he's not weird. Nor is he spooky. But there's a lot of spooky people in this world, right? But not the Holy Spirit. A lot of times we think, when we think the Holy Spirit's weird or spooky, it's simply because we've made him weird and spooky. It has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It has everything to do with us. He's my friend, the Holy Spirit is, and he's not weird. You see, the problem is, is a lot of times when we see somebody that we would deem weird, if I can say it that way, when we look at that, uh, or we see somebody acting out in a weird way, they tend to blame their weirdness on the Holy Spirit. And that's not, that's not a truth. The Holy Spirit is not weird. He's not spooky. We can be, by the way, a spirit-filled, a spirit-led, and a spirit-empowered church and not be spooky and weird. Amen? If you did not know that, I'm informing you right now. We can be spirit-led, spirit-filled, and spooky-free. Okay? Just because you're filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that there's this greater expectation of you to produce something out of your life than whatever it is Jesus first told you. He says, I just simply give you my Holy Spirit as a helper, and I want to be your friend. Don't make me weird. (laughs) You know, people are different when they grow up. Some people like to have a lot of friends, not really deep ones, just a lot of them. You know what I mean? I I got friends at work, I got friends at school, I got friends at church, I got friends in the neighborhood. They're not very deep, but there's many, and I'm good with that. I like that. I like having people around me, you know. But then there's some people that they value just that one friend that is deep. They they may know people. They may have friends, but they really just have one friend that they're close with. You know, we all look at friends differently. I have one friend in my life. I have more than one friend in my life, but uh, I have a friend in my life who, when I was growing up, I was really close to, and still am. He's the friend that when you call him, uh, six months you haven't talked. But when you talk to him on the phone, it's like you picked up where you left off at. Do you know what I'm talking about? That kind of a friend. The Holy Spirit wants to be and can be an even better friend than that. Wow, I don't understand. That's not possible. Yeah, it is. The only reason it's not possible is because you say it's not possible. The only reason you say it can't happen or it doesn't happen is because you say it can't happen. He wants to be your helper and he wants to be your friend. This particular friend knows all the good and the bad and the ugly about me. He knows all the mistakes I've made. He knows most of of the sins I committed growing up (laughs) as a teenager. And you know what? He still loves me. He heard me say some of the stupidest things in my life, and he still remained my friend. You see, the Holy Spirit says, I want to be an even greater friend than that. All we have to do is allow him to be a part of our life. If anyone is acting, by the way, in a manner that's not consistent with order, uh, that's not clear in communication, then they're acting outside of the realm of the Holy Spirit. And they are acting weird. 
not the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible is very clear that he's a God of order and that he's clear and communicates well. See, if we get caught up in this weirdness that says, well, it's not the Holy Spirit unless you're swinging from a chandelier or, or leaping over a pew or something like that, then what happens is we're no longer dictated by the Holy Spirit. We're dictated by what we think or how we feel. And that's not, that's not biblical. He's our Holy Spirit. He's, our help. he's the Holy Spirit. He's our helper and he's our friend. He's not weird. Now, I do not encourage you to try to jump a pew after service, okay? <clears throat> you will hurt yourself. Uh, but we've got to understand that the Holy Spirit wants to be our friend, and he wants to reveal to us. We don't want to give that impression that, that there's this weirdness, but we've got to make sure that we're hearing the Holy Spirit for ourselves. I know that some of us would say, maybe you've... Uh, heard people say this or, or thought this. or Well, if someone thinks it's weird, then that, that's their problem. You ever hear, hear anybody say that? This is just who I am and this is how I do it. If they think it's weird, then it's their problem. But I think there needs to be some balance that comes to that. When you're doing what you're doing just because you think it's spiritual, just because you think it's spiritual doesn't make it so. Did you follow that? Just because you do something that you think is this is the spiritual way to do it doesn't mean that it makes it spiritual. We had a, a lady in our Bible college. I call her Madam Butterfly. <clears throat> Not asked to make fun of her, but um, when she would worship, and I'm going to, again, I'm not making fun of her, just it was what it was. I was a young student, and uh, <clears throat> we all worship in different ways, right? Uh, some people uh, like to be expressive in their worship. Some people very calm. You know, I love watching the praise and worship team up here as they lead worship because you got some of them that are just worshiping or holding a microphone, and that's just fine. Then you got others that are just, and I think you all know who I'm talking about, too. Uh, is one better than the other? Is it? No. Is one right and one wrong? No. Is one different from the other? Yeah. It is. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but when you cross and you, you, you allow it to become something that it's not, uh, this lady, I named her Madam Butterfly because when she would worship, <clears throat> number one, she liked to bring, oh, what do you call it? Flags. She liked to bring flags. They weren't like flags like the United States of America, skinny long ones that she would whip around, you know, and doing all this stuff. And... <clears throat> It used, to, it used to annoy me. It doesn't any longer because I now live in Iowa. <laughs> but she was worshiping. But the problem was is she would do that and she wouldn't care about the three people in front of her or to the sides. If it hit them in the head, who cares? Because this is my worshiping the Lord. And then when she worshiped, she'd put her hand out and she'd kind of do this. The problem I had with that was is I was sitting next to her and she stuck her finger in my ear and did that. No lie. You could ask Lisa. She's worshiping, and she's, she's worshiping, but she's looking at me like, Jim's going to kill her. <laughs> I believe God heals because he's about to hurt her. And, you know, I'm a loving guy, I think, and I think I'm pretty nice, and I think I can tolerate a lot. But you stick your finger in my ear and start flicking it around, we got a problem. <clears throat> and I, I did that whole, she got that in my ear, and I kind of did one of those and looked at her. She didn't even care enough to open up her eyes and acknowledge that she just... You know, I felt so violated. Just get your hand out of my ear. And I was mad. I was mad for two reasons. I was mad because I was just, she annoyed me. But I was mad too because it, it, it was becoming something <clears throat> that I felt had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It had everything to do with her. Now, I don't know who she is. I don't know where she's at now. And again, I'm not making fun of her. That's just where she was at. She may be doing excellent right now. And, and uh, my point is, is sometimes you see people like that. You've got you've to know that when the Holy Spirit comes into our life, he says, I want to be your helper. I want to be your friend. And I'm not weird like some people portray me to be. Okay, there's an expressiveness in worship. That's fine. You can jump and you can dance and you can use cymbals and tambourines. The, they did it in the Bible. 
David wasn't afraid to make a fool of himself for Jesus. But just because you make a fool of yourself and, and you're not sure if you heard the Lord, but you're just going to say, well, David made a fool of himself, so I'm going to do that too. It must be spiritual. No, not, not, not necessarily so. You must have the Holy Spirit. He'll teach you. He'll lead you. He'll be your helper. But he wants to be your friend as well. Let me, let me read this. John 15 says, hey, let's read this one together. It's John 15, verses 14 through 15. Ready? Go. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father have made known to you. He calls us friends. He says, you are my friends. I will let you in on everything that's going on. When the Father speaks, when, you, when, when he wants to impart into your life. He'll do it through the Holy Spirit. Why is it important to have the Holy Spirit? For that reason there alone. He's our helper. He's our friend. He wants to impart and reveal things to us that we would not otherwise know. I believe there's four evidences of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give them to you. They're not in your outlines. You can just scribble these four words down. Power, love, fruit, and gifts. I'll say it again. Power, love, Fruit and gifts. <clears throat> I believe that when you start looking and recognizing, I've got the Holy Spirit in my life, how am I going to know that it's evident there? Well, number one, it is because you're a Christian. But how do you know when there's the maturing and the, there's the growth? Number one, because you'll experience power. Uh, remember, power from the Holy Spirit. It's different than what we think. We, we want to do the Tim the Tool Man thing and grunt a few times and more power, you know. But the power of the Holy Spirit comes sometimes in a quiet strength. And it empowers you to be able to do things that you normally couldn't do. He will empower you through His Holy Spirit. The other thing that you'll see an evidence of the Holy Spirit is love. And the reason I say that one is because when you have the Holy Spirit present in your life and you're seeking His voice, you will be able to love others the way that Christ loved them. Now, this one was new for me because I said, I can't love everybody. I don't love everybody. And, and I kind of heard the Holy Spirit say, no, you can love everybody. I didn't say you had to like them, but you can love them. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, the only way you're going to be able to do that, Jim, he said, was it's through me, the Holy Spirit. See, God calls us to love others, right? He calls us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and the second is like unto it. Love who? Love your neighbor. Who's my neighbor? Everybody that crosses your path. Well, how can I love them with the love of God? You don't have to like everybody, but you can love them. The, th the third thing was fruit. Uh, you will know that the evidence, uh, the Holy Spirit is evident in your life by the fruit that you see. Um, when, you go, when you go out to an apple tree, how do you know an apple tree is an apple tree? By the apples. Yeah, it's not a trick question. By the apples. By the fruit that's on the tree. If you see an orange tree, um, you know it's an orange tree because you see the fruit. If you look at a pear tree, what do you find? Pear. If you look at a grape tree, what do you see? Just checking, making sure you're with me. There's no grape trees. They're vines. But if you looked at a grapevine, you'd know it's a grapevine because of the grapes. Without the fruit, it's, it's just a tree. It's just another tree. You know that you have the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life because there will be fruit that will start to come forth in your life. There's things that you'll start to see in your life where you, well, what, what, what's, the, what's the fruit of the Spirit? Well, that's the whole Galatians 5 thing. It's a series we're probably going to look at a little bit down the road here. But you'll start to see things in your life. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, uh, long-suffering. Some of us, you know, we, 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 want, we want that one, but that can be the hardest one. Uh, he says you'll see the fruit in your life. And then he also says that fourth thing was gifts. You, you'll, you'll know the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life because there's gifts that God gives. He gives spiritual gifts. That's also something we'll be talking about down the road in the fall, about the spiritual gifts. You are here today, you have a spiritual gift that God has given you. you know, I, I don't think I do. No, you do. I'm telling you, you do. 
I know that you do. I just don't know what it is. And I, and I don't know how you'll use it yet. <clears throat> but what we want you to understand is, is that you know that there's, there's the evidence of the Holy Spirit because of the gifts that are in your life. So don't sweat that. We're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit later. We want to help you discover them. We want to help get you equipped and empowered so you can use them. <clears throat> there's also the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, speaking in tongues, which that's the last week we'll talk about. Um, one of the gifts is speaking in tongues. And uh, the Bible, if you speak in tongues, by the way, but you have not love, the Bible says that's a problem. That's a problem. So you can't use a gift without the love. Well, how am I going to get the love and the gift and understand how this power, how am I, when, when am I going to see the fruit in my life? <clears throat> when you start recognizing the Holy Spirit in your life. This is why it's so important. He's your helper, he's your friend, and he's not weird. Number three, the last one. Um, we're probably going to get done a little bit early today, and I'm sure you're crying over that, aren't you? Oh, no, please keep going. Uh, but we've got a couple things to take care of, too. But he's my helper, he's my friend, and number three is he's my God. He's my God, which this one kind of threw me <clears throat> through a loop a little bit because I thought, no, he's not God. God is God. Jesus is Jesus. Holy Spirit's the Holy Spirit. And it gets kind of, at least it did for me for a while, got a little confusing because you got the Father, you got the Son, you got the Holy Spirit. They're three separate entities, yet they're one. It's the triune God. And I believe there needs to become, there needs to come. <clears throat> a renewed respect and awe for the Holy Spirit as God. Now, I don't know if you'd agree with that. <clears throat> you may even say, I don't even get that. But I believe there needs to come a new level of respect that we have for the Holy Spirit as our God. Check out some of these verses. Let me show you. I'm going to read three or four of them to you. It says in John chapter 14, verse 26. Uh, help me out. You can read this one with me, okay? You ready? Go. But the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. He says, I will be your helper. I will be your helper that comes from the Father, letting you know what it is that you need to know. Uh, John chapter 15 says, When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me, and you will testify also because you've been with me from the beginning. <clears throat> Luke chapter 3, verse 22. says, The Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a, vi a voice came out of heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit came down, descended upon him, the Son, and he said, I am well pleased <clears throat> in all that you are doing. Matthew chapter 28. Go therefore... Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and who? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I command. So, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Have you ever thought about this? <clears throat> Sometimes I just sit there and think for a while. Have you ever thought about how the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit keep deferring to one another? You ever notice that in the Bible? Whenever one is approached, they always defer to the others. <coughs> in other words, it'd be kind of like this. Uh, let's say they came up to Jesus and they said, Jesus, man, it's so cool, your teachings and how you teach. Nobody teaches like you. I mean, you've got such an amazing way of taking these things that we need to know, these spiritual, these uh, biblical principles, and you put them into a parable form, and you tell a story like we've never heard before so that we can get it. And Jesus would say, well, I don't do anything unless I hear the Father first. He defers to the Father. Oh, but Jesus, your miracles, they're amazing. I mean, just dead people, they come, they come to life. Blind people see. Deaf people hear. You, it, the miracles are amazing. You can take a Big Mac and make a mega meal out of it. And Jesus would say, well, I don't do anything unless I see the Father do it. 
Oh, Jesus, you cast out demons. With one word, bang, they're gone. And it's as simple as that. And he'd say, well, I do that, but by the Spirit of God. He defers to the Spirit. And then when you find and read in the Bible, they come up to the Father and they say, Father, we love you and we, we, we praise you and we thank you. But he would say, uh, as much as we're exalting the Father, he'd say, but I exalted my Son. You see, and he'd defer to the Son. They come up to the Holy Spirit and say, maybe, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, I recognize that in my life and it's so great. Well, the Holy Spirit would just say, well, I just bring to your remembrance what Jesus said. Do you see how one of them doesn't take the credit for all the great things that's being done? They find the credit in each other. They, they honor that. Do you know that's exactly how we're supposed to be in the body of Christ? Uh, not, you know, in our world, we live in a sinful world. When something good happens and we've done it, what do we want? Well, we want the kudos. We want the attention. We want the credit. But here we see something happening where when you understand that the Holy Spirit is our God, uh, they, 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 they don't any longer start talking about how great they are. They are talking about how great God is. The Holy Spirit is our God. They, they, do, you, do you see what I'm saying here? They defer to one another. Um, if we could listen in, I guess, on a conversation in heaven where you got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit hanging out and they're sitting down around a, around a round table like this, what it would sound similar to is you'd have one saying, you're great. And the other one would say, no, no, you're great. The third one would say, no, you're great. No, you're great. No, yeah, and it would just continue like that constantly for an eternity because they would keep deferring to one another. <clears throat> this is the greatness of the Holy Spirit. It's important that we have him in our life. Ananias in the Bible, this is Acts chapter 5, this is right about the time where they were selling some property and Ananias lied about the amount so he could keep some back. And because of that lie, it cost him his life. He felt that conviction, but it says in Acts chapter 5 that Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? To lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep some, back some of the price of the land. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied. Now remember, he says, why is it that you have lied to the Holy Spirit in the beginning? And he ends with it saying, you have not lied to men, but you have lied to who? God. <coughs> he equates the Holy Spirit with God. Holy Spirit is our God. He's not some force that's just out there somewhere, this Holy Spirit. He's our God. He's our God. Most of the time, when we say God spoke something to me this morning, what we really mean is the Holy Spirit spoke something. The Holy Spirit revealed something to me. Well, isn't it God that spoke it? Yes, through his Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's his job. He's here to be our helper. And he will walk us through life. It's important for us to know this that there's a God that loves us. Not only did he send his son Jesus to die for our sins, but he gave us the Holy Spirit. Don't make him into something he's not, but receive him for what he is. He's our helper, he's our friend, and he's our God. Amen? Will you bow your heads with me as, as we conclude? I just want to ask you with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, would you just take a moment and ask... Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me this morning? What are you speaking to me? Holy Spirit, what is it that you want to reveal to me? Holy Spirit, what is it I need to know that I don't know right now? And even Holy Spirit... What is it that I do know that I know you've been telling me not to do but I've refused to listen up to this point? Jesus, we love you and we thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit. I pray today that we would have a better understanding of the importance of the Holy Spirit in our life and that we would be open to hearing what, what you have to say. 
that you'd lead us and teach us. Without, the Holy, without having a relationship with Jesus, we don't get the benefit of the Holy Spirit in our life. And maybe you're here today and you've not made that decision or, 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 or cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, I want to ask you into my heart. Without that, you don't have that benefit of the Holy Spirit. Are you here today? I just simply want to ask, are you here today? And you need to make things right. You need to ask Jesus into your heart. Maybe you've walked away from him. You may have asked him into your heart at one time and you just feel like there's been some distance. But you want to know that you know. If you feel that little tug on your heart, can I tell you something? That's the Holy Spirit right there. Are you here today? I'm not going to embarrass you, call you out, but I'm simply going to ask this. If that's you, just simply raise your hand and look at me. I might agree in prayer with you. That today as you make that decision, you can know not only do you have your heart right with God, but you have the gift of his Holy Spirit to lead you. Are you here today? I'll wait for just a moment. If that's you, simply raise your hand. I agree with you, my brother. God sees your hand in your heart. And as you raise your hand, he says, I now equip you. I've been waiting, he would say. Because God's got a plan for your life. You don't have to be worried afraid, spooked. All you have to know is is that he wants to reveal himself to you and he'll do it through his Holy Spirit. And as you raise your hand, he says, I come and I fill your heart. You don't have to worry about the past gone in the name of Jesus. Focus ahead on what God has for you right now and walk in there. Is there any other hearts here today? I agree with you. God sees your hand in your heart. Know that as you raise your hand, there's a fresh new anointing that comes that he places on your life. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are brand new. You know this, but he says, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal to you in a way that it's more of a knowing experientially. When he, when he speaks, you've heard him and you hear him. He just wants you to lean into that so that as you hear him, his voice, as you get closer and closer, his voice becomes louder and louder, and there will be no shadow of a doubt that you're walking exactly where it is that God is calling you to go. And when you get there, you're going to find such a joy, unspeakable because you've simply obeyed. Is there any other hearts here today? You'd say, Pastor, that's me. Wait for just a moment. I agree with you. God sees your hand in your heart. A grace that he places on your life today. And as you raise your hand and make a decision, it's not a decision to just say, yeah, I'll give it a shot. As you surrender all, he says, I come. I paid the ultimate price so that he can reveal to you today the power, the presence, and the help of his Holy Spirit. So where you've been dragging, where it feels like I don't, I can't figure it out. I don't have what it takes. He comes and says, I empower you today. You have what it takes because it's all about him. Receive him in your heart and your life today. Is there any other hearts here today? You say, Pastor, that's me. I need to make that decision today. If he's tugging on your heart, don't let it go. I agree with you. God sees your heart. Uh, i tell you what, listen to this. He wants you to know something. He says, you are my beautiful daughter. You are so precious in his sight. And no matter what anybody has said, no matter what the past has done, no matter what people in your life have declared something over you, he says, my voice matters most and I declare today that you are my daughter and I love you. There is nothing you've done and there's nothing that you can do to ever nullify that love and that grace that God gives. All he says is as you raise your hand, he says, let me come into your life. And start listening to my voice. Because you'll find that it might be hard to discern or tell at the beginning. But as you listen and as you hear and as you come after his voice, maybe there's a father that was in the past in an earthly form that you didn't either get to run to or want to run to. But when you run to him, you're going to find nothing but love. Nothing but grace. You're going to find nothing but mercy as you lay that out before him. You've been made brand new. I hope you know that. Walk in that newness. Is there any other hearts here today? Say, that's me. I need need to make that decision. Okay. All right. Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I agree with you. I see your hand. I'm not going to let it go. As you raise your hand today, know this. Jesus loves you so much. So much. And don't think for one minute, you're so young, this doesn't really matter. When God did great things in the Bible, he used people your age. You know why? Because you didn't doubt or question him. You just listened and obeyed. Did you make that decision today? No, he just comes and says, I love you so much. Thank you for hearing his voice and responding to him. Is there anyone else? Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you 
that you love us so much that you send your helper. So Lord, as we leave here today, we ask that you would continue to speak, that Lord, you'd help us hear, that we not become selective in our hearing, that we not become spiritually uh, hearing impaired, but that you would open up our ears and then obey your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to get ready in just a moment. <laughs> you know, one of the greatest things, a lot of times when the enemy brings an attack, <clears throat> an attack on your life, <clears throat> it's kind of funny to me, <clears throat> but my voice is giving out here. A lot of times when the enemy brings an attack, you'll find a physical thing going on within your life for something that's going on spiritually. That's why I laugh, because I'm trying to tell you it, and my throat's getting all choked up. <laughs> but uh, I say that for this reason. Um, we went to Atlanta. The last six, seven, eight weeks, we've been doing a lot of traveling. Went to Atlanta for a conference. Then we went to L.A. for a graduation. Then I went to Seattle for a convention. Then we're going to be going... <clears throat> we're going to be going away here in a few weeks on another trip. Uh, when I first went on a trip and went to Atlanta, we went to this, it was a conference, it was great, but there's a lot of loud music. You know loud music? There's, the, there's music that's kind of loud like this, and then there's real loud music that your clothes move. You know what I'm talking about? Boom, and your clothes go. And I had to put in earplugs in my ears, and I did that. And when I, when I uh, was done after the concert, I took them out, but it felt like I didn't. I felt like the earplugs were still in there, and I thought, what's going on with my ears? And I went on for four or five days. I went to the doctor. They cleaned my ears. They needed to be cleaned. But still, I, I couldn't hear exactly like I, I, I once could. And it worried me because I know my dad has hearing issues, and I'm like, am I at that age? Do I need to worry? And they took me down for testing, and they screened my ears. And, and they did say, you've lost some hearing since you were a kid, but nothing, nothing too bad, you know. And... Uh, but they said, there's been a little bit of a decrease. They said, have you been traveling? Yes, I have. I said, flying? Yes, I have. Once, twice? I said, well, three times. And we'll be doing a fourth. And they said, oh, well, that pressure of going up and down can really mess with the ears sometimes. And so they, they, they said, don't worry. Your ears are good. They work. They can't hear like they once used to at this point, but they work. It will come back. I want to tell you, if you're here today and uh, spiritually, it seems like I'm not hearing like I once was. It can come back. It can come back. You have to want to hear. That's where it starts. And when you start wanting to hear, then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's voice gets a little bit louder and a little bit louder and a little bit louder until that spiritual hearing is restored. Don't give up on that. Um, I've been asking the Lord lately, Lord, give me an ear to hear you. You know, I've been asking the Lord specifically lately, Lord, give me vision, give me an ear to hear you, and help me to proclaim what it is that I need to proclaim. <clears throat> and in the last month, my hearing's bothered me, I wear bifocals, and my throat's bothering me. I don't say it to be necessarily humorous, but don't be surprised that when you start taking steps towards the Lord, the very thing that you ask for, the enemy's going to try to come in. And he's going to try to steal your voice. He's going to try to shut your ear. He's going to try to shut your mouth. But when you hear the Holy Spirit and start doing what God tells you to do, there is nothing that can stop you. Absolutely nothing.